We are going to Beverly Hills to go to the McLaren dealership and scoop up a nice white 570S that we checked out the other day. What's the actual color code on that? Uh, hot white. I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> Sick looking white. Uh, is it pearl? Is it silica? I don't know, man. It's pearl? Yeah, it's pearl. Details. Weighing me down. Fast is what it is. Fast white. The white car it goes fast and I can't wait to buy it. Bullshit traffic. Trying to stop me from getting mine. And you've, been, you've been talking about getting a McLaren for a while, or wanting one at least. Yeah, I have. Um, what do you think was the first, what was the first thing you ever saw on this car that kind of was like, I want that shit now? Um. What the fucking shit? Yeah, straight up. Who? This motherfucker right here. This, yeah. This guy, pull up to him. Fuck yeah. Dude just like rolled his mirror all against the side of your car. This is how the day starts. A little hit and attempted run. Where's he gonna go? Uh, I'm in the intersection. Don't. Well, watch. Watch your bag. Oh, yeah, you're good. Look at this person, bro. It's a red fucking light. What are you doing, mom. Grandma? Uh, mom. Why did I call you mom? Because that lady is your mom's mom. That fucking guy hit my car and ran. They didn't think we were recording in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hit that car. No, it's cool. Was it just a scuff down the side? Yeah, I just like scuffed it with things. I wanted to pull up that guy. I would have made great footage. Just assaulting him in the trash. <laughs> regular. You scuffed my girlfriend's car. Dad. Dud car. Do you, would you ever think that you know you would be buying a McLaren? Yeah, I would say yeah. I mean, I'd be like that was the plan, you know. I didn't plan on being 28 and broke. <laughs> I was 18 years old, and, and Gian and I were like, all right, dude, we're gonna do this. And I assumed by this time I would have figured something out. I had intended on being successful at this point, but if I went back and told myself, like, hey, yeah. 28 years old, you're gonna go buy a McLaren. Be like, all right, man, that's what's up. <laughs> Give my 18 year, self, 18 year old self a little dab. Be like, true. You're the man. Not now. You're kind of a loser now, but at 28, you'll be the fucking man. This, shit, this shit's attainable, you know. And extra, extra rewarding when, when it's actually is attainable, and you're not like stretching yourself to, you know, to stun. You're not pushing your budget and be like, oh man, I really want to look cool, uh, but I'm gonna have to sweat out my finances every month for the next six years. <laughs> it's great when it's like you can you can do it and be like, I earned that. Don't settle for a boring life. Just outright don't do it. You don't need to be driving supercars or doing shit like that. But don't have a boring life. It's like you know, 18 years old, you'd be like, do you ever think you'd be driving this when you're 28? And it's like, I said honestly, yeah, because. I plan to have an exciting life and do what I want with it. And I made it happen. So, you know, if I'm 18 years old and thinking, oh man, I'll never do that, then I already have a, a defeatist mindset, I guess, or not the right one. I think it might have been a, a Chris Harris video, because he was just like constantly talking about McLarens and how dope they were, and just like finding any excuse to like put them in the video. <laughs> First seeing the 675, I knew I wanted one of those, but that's a little bit out of the price point currently. And then I was like, do I like, maybe I'll just get a 650. And I just, I couldn't choose a 650 and be happy with it. I would be like, I wish I got the 675, just like upped in, in price a little bit. But then the 570 came along. I'm like, that's a good looking car. You get a lot of car for the money. I just don't know why you would choose like a lot of other things other than that. We have made it to Beverly Hills. Just gonna sit down and do a lot of paperwork. I am very excited though. Filled out my application, waiting on bank approval, which is always a nerve-wracking process because it's like they just might be like, "Nah, dog, not today." It's like I just take my money. I want, I want you to have it. I want to buy this thing. 
I want you to have the money. And they're just like, no, it's not blockers. So on a level of one to hard, how excited are you? I have, I'm at like that mid-range right now where like you just, you, you want it to happen, right? You're getting like, you're like up and down. Yeah, like if this doesn't happen soon, it's never gonna happen. How'd you feel when you walked in and saw that car sitting there up front? And Felt like the right choice. Oh yeah, it's the right choice. Felt good, man. Just gotta get like a late touch under there. Let's go. Holding the camera to smell it. First thing to do is sit in there and be like, how do you work this thing? It's like a spaceship, man, it really is. You can sit there and fiddle with a bunch of knobs, turn it to the fastest, most hardcore setting, and that's what I'm gonna drive it on every day. Track mode, always. Going to the grocery store, throw it in track mode. This is the not so exciting part of car buying. You're just sitting there, people looking at you like, do we ruin this guy's day or do we make his day? And they're just, am I having a good day? Am I having a bad day? That's what they're up there doing. The bank. I moved up from like a four to like a six. I could work with it. You could thumb that in there, you know? Not quite a rage in 10 just yet, but we're getting there. 0.99, and um, there's the MSRP, and there's your down payment. Excellent. All right. Yeah, I'll go, uh, print everything up for you. Nice. So, is that good news? That's good news. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I can't sit still. I'm excited. You know what I realized when signing that paperwork? May 20th last year is when I bought the Aspen. Are you serious? Yep. Some people, I understand, buy cars as investments. I'm not one of those people. I know that I'm just going to put my money into a depreciating asset. That's fine. That's what that money is for. I've allocated those funds for awesome shit. I buy cars to drive them, and to drive them often, to drive them hard, whenever, wherever. They are cars. They are not statues. They are works of art, but they are not pieces of art. They are designed to be driven. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> Just owning that car, being in it, driving in it every day is motivation. It reminds me of how I got here to get this car and that I need to keep going so I can keep doing stuff like this. It's a constant reminder of what my work has got me and, and my attitude towards life of where I can go with that attitude. In many senses, yeah, it's a vain waste of money, sure. But it can be so much more than that. It just depends on who's behind the wheel. What am I chasing? Oof. I am after experience. Every part about it is an experience, from earning the money for it, to buying it, to driving it home, to driving it hard, to learning it, to seeing what you can do with it and where you can take it. 
I'm here for a limited amount of time. We all are, right? Why would you waste that time not trying to get every fucking drop out of life? What else are we here for? It's like a, an ATM just keeps spitting money out. And you're like, am I gonna walk away? It's, it's still spitting money out, bro. Like, stand there and grab it. Every fucking day is opportunity, man. I, I am so glad we stopped. There's like fucking 12 of them. We should probably go the opposite. Good idea.